So the first topic is on the differential diagnosis of congenital corneal, corneal clouding. That is, what are the uh, conditions that should come our mind, come to our mind when we are uh, dealing with a children who has a congenital corneal clouding? I have no financial disclosure to make in relation to this presentation. So these may be some of the varied presentations when a, a child presents to us uh, with a congenital corneal opacity. It could be congenital glaucoma, it could be something else. Uh, there is a very simple mnemonic uh, which goes by stumped, uh, where all the possible etiologies of this congenital corneal clouding are uh, in the form of this mnemonic. S stands for sclerocornea, T stands for tears in the decimates membrane. This could be because of primary congenital glaucoma, which is known as Hubstri, or it could be due to birth trauma. U stands for ulcer, could be herpes simplex, bacteria, or neurotrophic. M stands for metabolic corneal opacities, mucopolysaccharidosis, mucolipidosis, and cystinosis. P stands for posterior corneal defect, could be posterior keratoconus, Peter's anomaly, or staphyloma. E stands for endothelial dystrophy, like congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy, posterior, polymorphous, uh, posterior polymorphous dystrophy, and so on. And D stands for dermoid. Let us come to one of this con each of these conditions one by one. According to this paper, the most common conditions associated with a congenital corneal clouding were Peter's anomaly, sclerocornea, dermoid, congenital glaucoma, and birth trauma and metabolic disease. Primary congenital glaucoma is the condition that should always be excluded because of its obvious implications on the visual potential of the child. The primary symptoms and signs of this condition are, well, epiphora, and this is epiphora without discharge, which, which distinguishes it from congenital nasal lacrimal duct obstruction. Photophobia, which is the first symptom the child experiences. Blepharospasm, a corneal haze or opacification. And sometimes, although rarely, it can present as a red eye mimicking conjunctivitis, but again, this should be without discharge. So far as the signs are concerned, corneal haze and hubs try, and then a very important feature is the increased corneal diameter. Unlike adult glaucoma, pediatric glaucoma is characterized by an enlargement of the eye, either an increased corneal diameter or an increase in axial length, or a change in uh, or progressive myopia of the eye. So increased corneal diameter is very important to uh, note in these cases. We should remember that the normal neonatal horizontal corneal diameter is 10 millimeter and it increases by about one millimeter in the first year. If you just remember these uh, three uh, numbers, 11, 12, and 13, 11 millimeter <coughs> in a newborn is abnormal. More than 12 millimeter in an infant less than one year is abnormal. And more, more than 13 millimeter in a child of any age is abnormal. Certainly, when we find that a child has an enlarged corneal diameter and a hazy cornea, we should always be alert that this, we might be dealing with a child with congenital glaucoma. Then increased IOP and optic disc cupping, of course. Now, apart from the congenital glaucoma, there are the other differential diagnoses we just stated. And uh, 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 a little bit of embryology will help us to understand. At the fifth week of gestation, the lens vesicle separates from the surface ectoderm, and the mesenchymal neural crest cells migrate in waves between the surface ectoderm and uh, the optic cup in what will become the anterior chamber. There are three waves. The first wave forms the corneal endothelium and the trabeculum meshwork. Second wave forms the corneal stromal keratocytes, and the third wave forms the anterior RD stroma. Abnormalities in these three waves of mesenchymal cells can give rise to this sort of developmental anomalies. Sclerocornea is a non-progressive, non-inflammatory, scleral-like clouding of the cornea. It can be peripheral or diffuse, may be associated with corneal flattening or cornea plena and Peter's anomaly. Glaucoma is common and difficult to control, and most cases are sporadic and usually bilateral. Trauma. Rarely, birth trauma from forceps injury can result in decimus membrane splits and corneal edema. However, they're usually central, vertical, and unilateral. In contrast to the hub strike in congenital glaucoma, which are usually peripheral and concentric to the limbus. They occur in the presence of a normal corneal diameter and associated periocular bruising in the neonate because most of these are associated with a forceps injury, which also causes injury to the adnexa. Then congenital rubella syndrome can also present with congenital glaucoma, but there will be other ocular and systemic associations, like there will be congenital cataract, microphthalmos, iris abnormalities, pigmentary retinopathy, and systemic abnormalities like cardiac, neurological, and hearing loss. 
Peter's anomaly is another condition which sometimes can mimic congenital glaucoma. Most cases are sporadic and 80% are bilateral. It can be broadly divided into type 1, which has central or paracentral corneal opacity with iris strands that arise from the collarate and attach to the periphery of the opacity. Or it can be type 2, uh, which has lens adherence to the posterior cornea, failure of complete separation of the lens from the cornea and oblique or cataract. Then Peter's anomaly has myriad ocular and systemic associations. Glaucoma is seen in about in more than 50% of cases. Then there are some metabolic disorders. Although rare, they can sometimes mimic uh, congenital glaucoma. Mycopolysaccharidosis and cystinosis can produce corneal clouding, but they are typically bilateral. And usually, they are not present immediately at birth, but they are usually late infantile, infantile or early childhood rather than congenital. They have classic dysmorphic features. Uh, the keratopathy in these uh, children comprises of punctate corneal opacification and diffuse stromal haze. There are various types of polysaccharidosis and in all of these, this can occur except Hunter and San Filippo. Secondary glaucoma, pigmentary retinopathy and optic atrophy are the other ocular associations. So, there are a host of uh, mucopolysaccharidosis depending on the particular enzyme which is deficient and as we have just discussed, apart from Hunter and San Filippo, the others can present with congenital corneal clouding. So, these were the dysmorphic features we were discussing. So, this child, uh, uh, the child with this uh, Harler Harl syndrome has a frontal bossing, prominent eyes with hypertellurism and depressed nasal bridge and uh, gaped teeth with gingival hypertrophy and thickened tongue. Then the corneal dystrophies can also present with corneal opacities. There are two main corneal dystrophies. One is the posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy. This is relatively rare. It can present with corneal haze, usually asymptomatic. Signs are often asymmetrical and they are found deep in the cornea at the level of decimates membrane as vesicular and band-like lesions which are based seen on retroillumination. And the bands in this posterior polymorphous dystrophy sometimes mimic uh, the hub stri, but they have an irregular and scalloped appearance where the hub stri uh, are more smooth and thickened. These children, however, can also develop glaucoma in future. Then congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy or CHAD is relatively common. It typically presents at birth or few years of first few years of life. Uh, there is bilateral diffuse corneal edema with significant stromal thickening. The measured IOP may be falsely elevated with CHED, making the differentiation from glaucoma difficult. Normal corneal diameters and optic nerves should raise a suspicion of corneal disease rather than glaucoma. This is very important. And some authors argue that CHED and glaucoma can coexist, where others, whereas others dispute this. So, take home message from this uh, presentation that is the differential diagnosis of congenital cardinal clouding. Congenital or neonatal cardinal clouding could be due to a variety of causes, not only congenital glaucoma, but there could be others which uh, should be uh, ruled out. Remember stumped, mnemonic, and we should always have a low threshold for suspecting congenital glaucoma for obvious visual implications. Increased corneal diameter for age should heighten the suspicion and UA is essential in most cases to know the exact etiology and there may be multiple etiologies in the same child. Thank you.